course, this is difficult, right? Because I'm sitting down. But I do, in fact, have my colder pants on, and I'm going to show you them now. So here's the famous leopards. Very swishy. I'm going to take this off. Wow, this looks a bit like a sketchy zoom now, but there we go. So these are the colder pants from the side, from the back. Um, and the main features are, so obviously they're loose pants. They're like wide-legged, lots of room in there. And in fact, a few people ask like, what happens if you have a tummy? Now you may be thinking, oh look Jenny, you don't have a tummy. Why, yes I do. There it is. It's very much a tummy, but it disappears. You might be thinking, Jenny, where's your bum? And the answer to that is, I don't have one. Sorry, my tummy is bigger than my bum. But that's okay. Who cares when you've got some leopard print trousers on? I also wanted to highlight Carrie's amazing work, not having a leopard peeking out of my crotch. A lot of effort went into not having like a little head being like, hello. Also, I think in the back it's okay, but I can't quite tell. I, mean, I guess I got like a bit of a bum of a leopard there, but importantly, no, no leopard crotch. So the pants come in three lengths. We have basically a full length, and then we have this like cropped one. So these are the cropped ones. So this length is, you know, very on trend right now. Um, and then we also have a shorts length. But obviously the thing with pants is, you know, you can make them any length that you want. It's like, dig into here. You can make them any length that you want. Um, you know, you want them a bit shorter, you want a bit longer, you want shorter shorts, you want longer shorts. Who cares, right? All fine. Other things about them. The front waistband is flat. So, can you see that? It's just a flat piece of fabric. But the back, whoop, whoop, is elasticated. So, what this means is they're extremely comfortable. Um, from the front, you know, they look just like regular pants. And from the back, sure, they're elasticated, but not in a kind of like daggy way, as the Australians would say. Um, it does depend a little bit, the back on um, what kind of fabric you use. So I'm going to get my card again again. It's a bit cold. So if you use a thicker fabric, you're going to find like there's more obvious visible bunching, whereas this is like a polyester twill, so it's like very drapey, so you can barely see that they're elasticated at the back at all. So, what else? There's pockets, and the pockets are anchored in the waist, so they're actually sewn along here, and so that means you don't have like the flappy, flappy pockets, um, and they also have a really cool little like facing which means that even when you sit down, you know, when you sit down, inevitably your pockets open up a tiny bit. So the way we have it is there's a facing there, so they won't show. Um, I am five foot six to answer the question that came up. However, on that point, it's more about your proportions than your height, right? So you might be shorter than me, but have quite long legs for a short person and be exactly the same, like need exactly the same length, or you might be tall and need longer, there's kind of all kinds of variations actually, so it really just depends on you. So they come in size 12 to 32, which is our new core size range, I'm dropping things on the floor. And they also come in two pelvis fits. So they come in an apple and a pear. Now people ask this all the, all the time, and this, this is a tricky one. When we decided to do two pelvis fits, we had to name them something, you know? Do I love fruits? No, but it's, we thought it was the most understandable. So I am an apple, okay, let's do this again. So can you see that if I just pulled my pants in, I have very little curve from my waist to my hips, okay? Like there's just not very much difference here. Also, almost no bum, right? Like sad, sad state of affairs in the back. So I'm an apple shape. So basically you have like a lower waist to hip ratio. It's usually why like um, your your waistbands would dig in if you're an apple. So like, say you're buying jeans and you're an apple, you find that like too much fabric around the hips, not enough at the waist. If you're a pear, it's the opposite. And pears are actually a bit more common than apples, like at the population level. So what that means is you have a bigger hips and a smaller waist. So you're more likely to be the kind of person who has gapping at the back of your jeans. You know, you could put your hand down the back of your jeans. That's very typical in pears. And the difference between the two is really in the back. So if you think, well, I've got a tummy, which one do I have? Doesn't matter, they're both made for a tummy, okay? 
Both apple and pear made for a tummy. But pear is made for having a bigger bum, basically. Bigger bum and bigger hips. Um, and the difference is that it's more shaped in the back and it has two darts. So you don't really see the darts because they kind of disappear into the gathering, but they're there. You can see them on the technical drawing. So I'm an apple, but if you have like a bigger bum and a smaller waist, then you're a pear. So now I want to talk a little bit about how you pick your size. So I'm going to share my screen here um, so that you can see my fancy little slides. Okay. So if you're, if you're finding that the picture of the people is over the chart, you can drag the, the window with the people over to the side. So these are the two charts. If you were in my previous webinar, you know that the body measurements is what your body measures and the finished garment measurements are what the um, garment measures. So you're going to be picking based on your waist and your hip measurements. So you can see them here. Now the waist measurement that we give in the finished garment measurements is actually this, right? It's when it's stretched out. So that's basically the absolute max. Don't be worried if you think, well, that's a lot bigger than me. They're going to fall down. They're not going to fall down because they have elastic in them, which brings them in. Okay. And then the hip you can see has positive ease. So say you're a size 20 and you have a 50 inch hip, the hip is 54 inches. So there's four inches of wiggle room there. Um, but if you're making the pair, there's another inch and an eighth, right? To accommodate the fact you have a slightly bigger bum or hips. Now, there are some important things here. Because you pull them on, the waist has to get over your hips. Now, we're all a bit squishy, okay? So what that means is it's actually okay if, um, if technically speaking, you're like, wow, I actually couldn't get that waist over my hips. In fact, in all of them, if you didn't squish, you wouldn't be able to get them on because say the size 18 again, there's a 45 inch waist and there's a 52 inch hip. You're like, well, I can't get, you know, 45 inches over my 48 hip. You can really easily because we squidge. However, if you're grading between sizes, between a smaller waist and a bigger hip, then you might run into trouble, right? Because your hips won't squish like, they'll squish like a couple of inches, but they won't necessarily squish like eight inches. So if you are grading, so they're much more like this, from a smaller waist to a much bigger hip, then you might need to put a zipper in. Most people won't but occasionally you might. So that's why also it's always a good idea to make a muslin first. Make a muslin of the shorts, you will save time, you will save fabric, it's easier, just put them on. But if you're doing that, or if you're concerned about that, then check. So I already mentioned, we have the inseam length here, so you can measure whatever you want, but we also have lengthened and shortened lines, and you wanna use those lines to alter the length, not just add at the bottom, because that way you're gonna keep the shape okay, that we want. Now, in terms of fabrics, these are made intended for wovens. So we are looking at light to midweight wovens. So what we recommend is like rayon or poly twill, tensile, linen, chambray. We've been using like six to nine ounces, more or less, like if you're looking online and it says what weight it is, more or less. You can use heavier ones. And in fact, Ayala has and made an awesome pair, but they'll be much more structured. They will look more like, you know, sailor pants, right? They'll like stick out. They're not going to be flowing. And in terms of using a knit, so we never intended these to be knit. However, Ayala is currently working on some knit ones. And what we're finding is that if you interface the front waistband with something non-stretch, then it seems to work. There'll be a different look but you could make them as like pajama pants or just like cool fun knit pants if you wanted to. I wanted to show you a few examples because we had a bunch of people asking us about this. So here are like the three main samples we had. So Andrea here on the left, who's in the Navy with the stripe. So she has, her pants are in a poly rayon stretch suiting. So a lot of poly actually in these, we're finding polys are working really, really well because you have really good drape. And the top is a cedar dolman top that we just didn't, we cut on the fold. So instead of having the center seam, which you, know, you don't wanna do that with stripes, we just cut it on the fold instead, took out that seam allowance. That is like an A1 amazing outfit. I feel like it is the most Jenny outfit of all time. And sadly, I gave it to Andrea. What was I thinking? Just because we're good friends. I was like, here, have the whole outfit. And now I'm like, 
So now I need to make my own because that's what I want to wear every day. Then we have me. I already told you this is like a poly from Mood Fabrics. Sadly, it just sold out, but it was fun. Um, and then I was wearing a ready to wear top there. And then Ayala in the orange pants, um, that's a textured poly crepe. We've had so many questions about her top. That's a Springfield top, guys. Um, it's in a four ply crepe de chine from Emma One Sock. And what we did is we altered it to a V-neck. Very easy, you just draw a line on V-neck. And um, then we made a facing so that um, instead of having to have like top stitching, you know, it was just flipped in. So that was a very effective one. Um, all of the information about what sizes we're wearing um, and things like that are all available on the website. So I'm gonna stop the share now. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly look. There's no zipper in these pants, correct. There was no zipper in these pants. Okay, just checking to see if there's any questions that I can answer. Okay, so someone was asking, would they work in a Liberty Cotton Tana Lawn? Mm, probably not, to be honest, because they, the Tana Lawn sort of like, it catches a little bit. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna cling to your legs a bit and not flow, I would guess. I think either you need something that's like slinky, like a poly twill, or you wanna go all the other way and, wear, and use something that actually has some structure and it's gonna hold. But I think in between like cotton voile or cotton lawn, I don't know. I mean, you can give it a go, but I would say, I mean, Liberty is so expensive. You probably don't want to make like a $150 pair of colders and then realize that it doesn't work very well. So that was a massive blah, 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 blah download of all the things about the pattern. But now we get to the bit that's a bit more exciting and you don't just have to watch me anymore. So we have six people, one of whom is Ayala, Cashmere Supremo, um, who have made colders. And so they are now going to show you their colders and um, just tell you a little bit about any tips, thoughts, etc. Over to you, Ayala. All right, can you guys hear me? Yep, okay. I can hear you anyway. <laughs> this out of the way. Take off my color card again. All right, so here are my colder shorts. Looking so good. I'll just cat call you because everyone else is on mute. <laughs> Woo! Um, I'll talk a little bit and then I can also like move around so you guys can see them from all yeah. angles. But um, so I made these I think like two weeks ago or so, but it's just been so cold here that you know I haven't actually gotten to wear them, which is fine because we're stuck inside anyway. Um, I made a size 12 pair. So as Jenny mentioned, that means that they have um, these darts back here. I don't know if you guys can see those. They actually kind of blend in nicely with the, um, you know, like the folds of the elastic in the back, which I actually really like. I think that's really nice. Um, I love, love, love this flat front. I feel like it's not something that you see on a lot of elastic um, pants. And I, th I feel like it just makes it look so nice and polished um, and kind of professional, even for shorts, which is really nice. Um, what else? So I actually, I made this out of fabric that we, um, that I picked up at a fabric swap that we had. Um, I think it was like a month ago at this point. It was right before we had to shut everything down. Um, and so I don't actually know what it is. I think just based on the way that it like feels and wrinkles a little bit, I think it might be some kind of like, um, linen although I think it's a little bit on the heavier side so which which I think is actually nice for shorts I feel like for shorts you want it to be a little bit more structured um uh you know I think that drapey stuff works really well for the for the long um the long views um what else so I did mm -hmm. sorry I was gonna say so you altered the length a little bit right yeah. Yeah, so I did shorten them a little bit. Basically what I did was I just cut them exactly as it is in the pattern. And then I just, you know, once I had it sewn up, I just kind of went up to the mirror and I like folded it up to where I thought looked best on me and the proportions and whatnot. Um, and then I just kind of hemmed it from there. So I think overall it might be like about an inch and a half to two inches shorter. Um, but I, like Johnny said, the great thing about, um, you know, these pants is you can basically like make it however short you want, however long you want and all that. So, all right, let me walk around a little bit so you can see. Here's the side view. Here's how it looks in the back. Let's get up close again. 
Uh, it's hard to see when you're facing the other way. <laughs> Looking good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. So I've already made like three other shorts <laughs> um, in the last like two weeks. And um, yeah, like Jenny said, I'm working on um, a knit uh, a hack for it. So excited for that. Awesome. And I'm also wearing it with a Concord tee, um, which I think has shrunk in the wash a couple times. <laughs> it's a little bit smaller than, than I would like it to be, but yeah, that's about that. Any other angles I should get? I think that looks all good, Ayala. Thank you very all right. much. All right, next up we have Sierra. Can hey, y'all. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hello. All right. Let me move this. Um, these are my tester version shorts. So full disclosure, I did not attempt to pattern match. So you see, it's not. But <laughs> let's see if, you, if I get on my toes, if you can see. Let's move you back a little bit. I did a size 24 um, pair that did not work. So let's just try to do this a little bit. You more. tilt it. I'm trying. Let's see if I can tilt it to make it not fall over. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yay, we did it. So we have our flat front. And apparently I'm not as tall as I thought I was. Um, <laughs> and you can't see, well, maybe you can see like closer, my little dirt. Nice. Um, again, no pattern matching. Um, I did not alter the length at all. And of course you can't see the bottom of them because I'm not great at tilting things. But you have pockets. They're very comfortable. And this is a rayon chalet. I guess I can walk this way if that helps. Maybe I could dance. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are my shorts and they're about uh, maybe like three to four inches above my knee. I'm sorry I'm not able to show you that better. Um, no, it's good. Thank you. Yes. How did you find them to sew up? Oh, they were super easy and uh, very quick. And I enjoyed it because I haven't worn shorts in years. I haven't purchased or worn shorts in years. So to find something that I can make that I feel great in is just exciting awesome i also love your yellow wall thank wow. you so good is that your apartment <laughs> you. oh yeah so it's my house down in georgia wow i wish it I has been hot here i'm sorry awesome cool yes. well thank you very much sierra we thank you are going to head on to anna and one quick note on um oh. sierra's we yeah. did shorten the shorts a little bit after testing yeah um so the final Final pattern is a little bit shorter than those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. No, we got that. <laughs> okay. Um, I will. I will say, you know, like shorts length is obviously like a personal preference. On the whole, slightly longer shorts are less likely to crawl up into your crotch. If we all know what that's about. Um, so if you keep them slightly longer, or if they're made out of slightly firmer fabric, it's a bit less likely to happen. Or you can just go the total other way and just make them really short, and then it doesn't matter. But it's really something, you know, just like up to you. But like I said, like, don't, you know, like I Ellet said, like, don't be too much like, oh, I like the length or I don't like them. Like, I'll buy or not buy it based on that because, you know, you can make them any like you want. Cool. Thank you very much, Sierra. We're now going to chat to Anna. Hello, I'm Anna. Um, I uh, have, let me see if I can do some tilting here. Ta da. So these are in a these are the full length ones as you can probably see you can also see i have no butt to speak of like jenny similar to jenny so my back is a little bit loosey goosey -na 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 -na. um here's my pockets and this is the wash linen that um i got from blackbird which is super great um i was very i saw a couple of people in the comments saying they were a little skeptical about the wide leg because it's so much fabric, but they feel great and they look so great, I think. Um, and they're just like, I, I've been uh, trying on specifically wide leg cropped pants for like, since they've been on trend for the last couple of years. And every time I try them on in a store, I'm like, that's wrong. That doesn't look good on me. And these are like, so great. Um, the I'm 5'7", just for reference. Um, I have a short inseam though. Um, but these, the, the waist on this, I always have to add, I frequently have to add length in the rise for 
it to be in a place that I like it. Um, and these I did not do any adjustments to. Um, so yeah, they're lovely and comfy. And I have been working from home for about six years. Um, so I have a lot of soft pants and these are definitely going into my regular soft pants rotation. <laughs> yes, little did we know that it would be an ideal time for soft pants. <laughs> Elastic bag. Um, and I'm going to show everyone in a minute, but um, we actually have um, also a thing with Blackbird Fabrics, who supplied all this fabric that you can get 10% off um, through April 30 with the code COLDER10. So if you want that actual pair of pants that Anna has, you don't need to go down and steal them from her. You can <laughs> buy it from Blackbird and make your very own. Cool. I think this color is called uh, Rosewood. Perfect. Also very on trend, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. And it goes with lots of other things in your wardrobe, as we can see. This <laughs> Clearly. Thing I've seen with it. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you, Anna. Now we are going over to Shannon. Oh, hello. Um, this off so you can see them. So I made my color in very bright, as you can see. Uh, there you can see there. The, yeah. Like slightly crop sleek. Um, so this is the viscose um, linen blend from Blackbird. It's about, a, I think it's a 65% viscose, 35% linen. So it's like flowy, but it, it's opaque, which I like. I didn't want them to be see-through, obviously. Um, and I made a size, uh, an, a pear shape size 24 at the hips, graded to a 22 at the waist. And then because I'm kind of actually closer to a 20 at the waist, I just like shorten the elastic a little bit. So I just shorten it by like maybe an inch so that the actual fabric would be the size of the 22, but the elastic would be a little bit snugger and it fits really well. Like I like how it's, um, it's like comfortable, but snug. Um, there, there's the back. Um, I, when I was making them, messed up and forgot to sew my darts in, so, like, I cut it with the darts and then forgot to sew the darts, and then just thought I made a mistake, and so I, like, eased the pants on, so there's no darts, but it worked, <laughs> um, but next time I'll remember to do the darts. Um, yeah, I really love them, they're great. I like the flat front also because I don't, I like the comfort of elastic waist pants but I don't like all the fabric in the front when it's like a full elastic waist um so I was really excited for the flat front and for like how wide the the waistband is because it's like not gonna dig into like your back rolls when you sit down which uh is great in my book yeah <laughs> So yeah, they look so awesome. It's so funny. Like they also go with so many other things because you styled them with a different top in the photo, but it also looked cool with that. Yeah, um, no, they go with like so many colors, like teals and purples and blues and all sorts of things. And I wanted to highlight a few things that Shannon mentioned there. So, and actually um, Anna did a bit as well. They're really high rise. Okay. So like they're right up there. And they have a big waistband, so it's two inches wide. Um, and because, and I deliberately do this, so I have what's called like a B belly, right? Where you have sort of like a roll, a, almost like above your belly button, and then a roll underneath. So I'm shaped very similar to Shannon. And the, the, what happens is that the waistband comes all the way up above that first roll. And that's what basically lets you from the side, basically you look like you have a flat stomach in the most people do. Um, because it's going like above there. Um, and it's interesting because that's the kind of thing, I don't know about you, but like before I learned to sew, I would never have worn this style because I wouldn't have been able to get it to hit exactly the right yeah. point. So I think that that's, you know, one of the things that kind of makes it good for curvier people. Yeah. I'm also, I'm about five, seven and I also am like very high waisted. So like getting things that actually hit at like where my defined waist is, is very hard. And I like that about Kai's Yeah, Great. Thank you, Shannon. Um, we are now going to go to Chloe. If Carrie's going to do that. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? You can. Hello. Okay. Great. Um, hi. Good morning. It's morning on the 
West Coast. These are my pants. Let me tilt it a little bit more. Excuse the mess. Um, I also made mine out of the uh, linen viscose blend. I actually am unable to wear poly fabrics because I'm allergic to them. I'm allergic to everything. Um, so this fabric's one of my absolute favorites. I made the pear shape in size 20, straight size 20, but uh, I used the measurement for size 18 for the elastic. Um, it works really well for my shape. My butt has its own zip code, so I'm really happy that it fits. <laughs> and if I pull it down, maybe you can see the darts. I love the dart shape in the back. It works so well. Uh, I feel like it um, just makes the back look really nice. And I love the flat front as well. I have the same sort of shape, Jenny, that you were talking about, um, where I have this roll here and another one here. So I really appreciate all of the room I have for the waist. Um, they're just like extremely comfortable. I actually often find this style isn't, but these pants are just really great. Um, and this color is Adrienne top there. Sorry? Are you wearing another Adrienne top from Friday Pattern Company? Um, yeah, not to uh, take the focus off my pants. That's this, is, <laughs> this is an Adrienne top from Friday Pattern Co. Um, I have a lot of them. They just go really nicely with these pants, but I'm five foot uh, nine, by the way. So I added an inch and a half length to the legs. Oh, here's my cat. Hello. Um, and uh, it's just perfect. The rise is perfect. The waistband is really the perfect width. I didn't have to make any adjustments besides adjusting my elastic. So yeah, does anyone have any questions? They look awesome to me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, we're going to go over to Birgit now for our final show and tell. Can you hear me? Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so I love my calders. <laughs> um, I made a pair in um, pink washed linen from Blackbird Fabrics, and I made a size um, 16 at the waist and graded down to a 12 at the hip. Um, I have, and there I'm an apple shape. I have a tummy, but again, I don't have much of a rear end. So I do have some bagginess back here. Um, but the minute I put them on, I could tell that I wanted another pair. Um, they're so comfortable. Um, they were wonderful to sew. I love the flat waistband. I think that's what makes all the difference in the world for me in these pants. Um, I just, they feel so good on. And I live in the South where it's hot and humid. And so I'm either freezing in air conditioning or sweltering outside. And so I made um, the cropped length and it's just a perfect length for me and for where I live. Um, and I, I know for sure I'll be making another pair. Yeah, I love the way you've like, I, I, one of the things I think is interesting about these kind of pants is like, what top do you wear? You know, like it's not always obvious. And I think that like the styling you've done, I think it's just like awesome. So like a little shell, tuck it in, a big necklace. Um, <laughs> like a Thank you. combo of things. Um, oh, of course, my computer started to run low on batteries. How much have we got? Anyway. Cool, thank you. Well, we're gonna come back over to me and I'm gonna answer questions now. Um, thank you so much to everybody who um, just participated in the fashion show. Um, we just had nonstop comments as you, were, as you guys were all talking about how much everyone loved it. So um, I think this might be, you know, one of the, you know, I don't wanna be crass and like, there's nothing positive about the situation right now, but I think that one of the silver linings is that maybe we'll continue doing this in the future because I think it's super helpful, not just to see photos of testers, but actually to see people moving around and talking about them. Um, because we all know that you can make something look very good if you're like standing in a very specific position for a while. Um, but especially with pants, I'll be honest, um, you know, often they don't tend to look as good in real life as they do when someone's moving around. So I think it's great that you guys can all see, um, see what they look like. Um, I mentioned a second ago that we have a 
code. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. Um, hold on, there we go. So we partnered with Blackbird Fabrics for all these guys. Um, so their pants all came from there and you can get 10% off their fabric and they're still shipping right now, although only to the US and Canada. That's my only caveat right now, um, using Calder 10. So if you wanna replicate um, one of those pants, you can. Um, one thing you might want to do is if you go onto our blog, you will see the roundup of all of the pants and then there you can actually see like what type they use. And many of these fabrics that our testers use um, are actually available in tons of colors. So for instance, if you love Shannon's pants and the way they looked, but you're like, I like a cream pair, they may well have that because they actually kind of have a rainbow of many of these colors. So. Now I am going to answer questions. So I am now, you have to bear with me because I have to kind of scroll backwards. Okay, so people are saying, yay, lovely, blah, 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 blah. Okay, hold on. I know there were questions. Would Liverpool work for this pattern? So I assume you mean Liverpool knit. So to my point earlier, like we haven't done them in a knit yet, probably. They would definitely look more like pajama pants. That's for sure, um, than regular pants. But, um, but I think theoretically, yes, you could. As I mentioned though, you just wanna interface the front waistband because if the whole waistband is stretchy, they're gonna fall off you. So the way it works right now is because they're woven. If they're knit, they're gonna fall off you unless you interface the front. One okay. thing you can do with that, Jenny, is you can actually use a woven fabric for the inner waistband, the inner front waistband, and that'll give it a little structure if you're wanting the knit pants to look like sort of outside pants. <laughs> Another good idea, yes. Um, Sherry asked, has anyone tried tapering the leg a bit? Do you know what is interesting? I actually tried the other day and it didn't look so great. So you can try. I'd say if you want to taper them just a little bit, you can. Um, but there's something about the combo of the leg width and the pelvis shape that works. And it's odd, like I did it and all of a sudden I looked like I had these like baggy hips. Um, I am not a pattern drafter, so honestly, like I'm not a hundred percent sure why, but so the answer is you can try, but I don't know if it's going to work or not. You, you can have a look at it. Are we looking in the future at doing closer leg pants? Yes, we are. You could just wait. Okay. No, no time soon though. Not making a promise there. Okay. Going back. Does anyone have advice for fabrics that don't wrinkle easily? So polyester does not wrinkle easily at all. So these pants I'm wearing here, oh, you saw my lovely scar there. See, this scar you don't see in any cash from photo shoot because I photoshopped that one out. Um, polyester does not wrinkle easily. Now, not, obviously not everyone wants to wear polyester and if it's like 110 degrees, you probably don't want to be wearing it. Um, but for these pants, it's actually quite a good, quite a good move. Um, and you can also use something that has some poly in it which also helps. So for instance, there are like linen blends now where they have like another fabric in them or another fiber in them, which stops them wrinkling so much. So that's another option. Um, you know, there's also things like rayon chalet, which I think Sierra said she used. Um, I will say that's tricky to sew. So if you're a beginner, I wouldn't use rayon chalet. I actually think that something like the viscose linen blend would probably be ideal actually. And you can see, cause like quite a few of these pants, I think people were showing like, They've been wearing and sitting up and sitting down and nobody's looked horribly creased, right? Like no one's had like massive, massive um, creases across the crotch, which you get in some fabrics. So I think to that point, like these Blackbird ones are actually like a really good, a really good bet. Amy asks, can they be changed to a lower rise? Yes. Yeah, you could. Now, if you, if you, if you really put them down, then obviously the ratio is going to change because the waist is really high right now. And as you get lower, your waist gets bigger. So you might potentially have to alter sizing a little bit, but yeah, you can change the rise. Um, and you know, you basically slice through the pelvis and reduce it down. Um, some people are asking about what size to choose. So I talked about this on a previous webinar. If you're in different sizes in your waist and hip, the key thing is that you can grade between sizes. So for instance, Rod is saying she's a 38 and a half inch waist and a 43 hip. So let's go and have a look at that right now, okay? So 38, 38 waist, 43 hip. 38 waist, I'm incredibly bad at remembering numbers. 
Okay, 38 waist, 43 hip. So, 38 waist would put her in the 18, and a 43 hip would theoretically put her all the way down in the 12, okay? So it would be like either the apple or the pear 12. So you're grading between sizes. And what that basically means is you're gonna draw, you're gonna pick the 18 at the top, you're gonna make the 18 waistband, and at the top of the leg, you're gonna pick the 18. And then you're gonna put a dot on the 12 at the hip notch, and you're gonna join them up. And what it means in that case is that you're basically removing this curve and making it straighter like this. In that case, grading between sizes is gonna be fine. The concern that I mentioned is if you're doing the opposite and doing that, that's when it's a possibility that you might reach the point that you can't get them on. But for most people, so if you're willing to like, you know, do a bit of the jiggle, then you probably can get them on. Okay, my computer's about to run out of power because I didn't plug it in. So I'm gonna go and get my charger and I am going to hand over to Carrie to sub in for a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna see if I can get a question for you, Carrie. Hold on. Um, interfacing. Okay, Beth Allen said, I'll have to grade from a 28 waist to a 20 hip. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? I'll be back in one minute. Sure. Uh, that's pretty similar to what we just talked about. Grading down in the hips really isn't an issue in these pants um, because of the way that they're shaped. Um, so yeah, so we have a section on the website that's all about grading between different sizes. So um, I will pop a link in the chat after uh, Jenny comes back, but yeah, that's a super simple grade because you're basically just bringing it down. You can try it with a bigger hip. You'll just have like extra flow. So if you're using a super drapey fabric, I honestly wouldn't even worry about grading all the way down necessarily, but you can grade really easily between two to four sizes, no problem, either direction really on these pants. Um, but yeah, that is an easy, easy grade on these pants. And these ones sew up really, really quick. So they're a great first pant project or um, super easy to make a muslin with as well. Well, uh, cool. I'm back. Okay, with... awesome. <laughs> um, so someone asked about what fruit type they are. So they said they're, oh, it's the same one, but we can give you the example. A 38 waist and 43 hips. So that would be more of the apple, right? So what you're thinking is like when you have smaller hips, if you think of yourself as someone with small hips, you're probably an apple. And if you think of yourself as someone with big hips or a big bum, you're probably a pear. Um, I wouldn't worry too much because the, there is a difference in the patterns, but it's not like massive, right? Like it's not like the be all and end all. So like, even if you make the sort of quote unquote wrong one for you, you'll probably still like it. Um, okay. Juliana says, I'm six foot two. Is the patterns still high waisted enough for tall women? Ultimately, it depends on your personal proportions. Okay. So. Do you have like a five foot six torso on really long legs, right? Do you have a really long inseam? Are you totally proportionate? There's a real differences between people, right? It's the difference between like a petite and a short person, theoretically. It's like, is everything smaller or just a bit of you smaller? They are very high waisted, okay? If you hike them up, like they practically hit my bra. So there's a decent chance that they would fit you. Um, but that's why we would always recommend a muslin. Danielle asks, if you have a slightly bigger waist, like an inch bigger, can you go ahead and make the smaller size? Yes. I wouldn't make any differences, I, or any changes. I would just do that. Because like you can see, there is so much room here. You could probably be two or three inches bigger and it would be totally fine. Um, so yeah, one inch, not an issue at all. Um... If I have an apple-ish waist to hip ratio, but a sway back, should you choose the pair? No, I'd stay with the apple because you're still getting basically like the same amount of fabric in the back. And because it's gathering in, I think you're fine, especially if you're using something drapey because it sort of melts away, right? Like it just sort of disappears in a very drapey fabric. Where on the website do you find the sizing guide? Um, <laughs> Carrie, you just can, hold on. I'm just gonna check. I was about to tell you something, but I'm like, let me just check that I've done it in the right way first. Um, so I know that it's definitely at the bottom. Okay, yes, you scroll down to the bottom of the website. 
And in the footer, it says sizing. We're actually working on a project right now to revamp our entire size guide and make it much better. So soon it will not be there, but that's where it is right now. Okay, let me have a look. Would tensile be a perfect fabric? Yes. Now I will say there are actually lots of types of tensile because tensile is like a fiber. It's not like a fabric weight. So you can get like tensile denim. So that wouldn't be. But the kind of typical tensile, what people call tensile or think of as tensile is like, yes. Would suiting will work? It can. So actually, um, Ayala has already made some pants out of a suiting fabric and it kind of looks cool. Like I said, they're very structured and they don't flow. So the legs look bigger because they kind of just stick out. They look a bit sailor panty, um, but they're good. I think the only thing to consider when you're making wool pants is do you need the lining? Um, because otherwise they can really like stick to your legs when you're walking um, or they could be actually quite unpleasant to feel. Um, so that's something to consider. Okay. Would fabric on the bias work? I mean, I, I guess. I mean, your biggest issue probably would be cutting the pattern pieces out, actually, because if you're cutting a long piece at 45 degree angle, you would need a really big piece of fabric. Um, also, if you do do that, you would definitely want to hang them at least overnight because bias stretches so much. And these are, you know, almost like, like a skirt. So if you did do a bias, you'd want to do that. Um, but to be honest, like I think if you're using a flowy fabric anyway, I'm not sure that it would, I'm not sure you'd gain that much. I think the one thing it would do is it would cling around your legs a bit more and you kind of don't want that, right? With these fab, with these pants, you want them to like flow down. You don't want them to like go around your legs, like and hold on your legs. You kind of want them just to flow. So for that reason, I, I probably wouldn't do bias actually. You can tell that I'm making this up as we go along, right? Okay, let's see if there are any ones. Okay, the Blackbird Fabric Discount Code is Calder10, C-A-L-D-E-R-10. Okay, how much does it cost? So the paper pattern costs $18, which is our standard rate for paper patterns. And right now you also get the PDF free, which is worth $14. So I'm not gonna pretend that that's like two for one because it's the same pattern in two formats, um, but that's how much it is right now. So almost all our patterns are 18 for paper, 14 for PDF. The only exception is the Chilton, which is slightly more expensive. Peggy's saying, should I choose according to my hip or my waist if I need to grade? So the kind of the point of grading is you don't pick one, right? So you'd be like, I'm an 18 waist, I'm a 22 hip. So you'd pick the two sizes and then you grade between the two of them. So it's not about just picking one. Um, there is a lot of leeway in these pants, okay? So like if your waist is just a little bit bigger, you probably don't have to grade. If your hip is a little bit smaller than they're intended to be, you don't have to grade because there's just so much like so much fabric in there. I wouldn't worry too much. But if you're more than one size apart, then you're going to want to do that. Okay. Doo -be -doo -be -doo -be -doo. Has anyone made them with Cupro? I don't think so, but Cupro is really similar to most of the fabrics that we had from Blackbird. So I think it would look very, very similar. Are the legs more or less straight? So you would shorten them at the hem. No need to shorten around the knee. Well, so we always recommend using our length and shorten line because we deliberately place it in a point where if you use it, you're going to maintain the shape of the leg. Um, that said, yes, they are very straight. Yes. So if you wanted to, you could play around with that. Um, is this a multi-size pattern? Yes, it is. It goes from size 12 to size 32. Always use your measurements to pick and not your ready to wear size because it may not be the same as your ready to wear size. Um, and all our patterns come in like multi-size. So historically we were 12 to 28. Um, but recently we went up to 32, but when you go on the website, you'll be able to see which are 32. So I think we have four patterns in 32 now, maybe five. Um, but we're hoping, well, we'll see how it goes because life is very odd right now, but we hope maybe by the end of the year that they'll all be in 32. That's the, that's the goal. We had maybe an inappropriate question. What are we planning in the future? Not that inappropriate. I mean, cheeky, maybe not inappropriate. It's fine. Um, well, we're planning on a blazer. 
that's what we're working on right now. So we do actually have an in-between one, which we're currently sort of like brainstorming. If we can't do a photo shoot, how does that work? Um, we, so we do have one in the summer that we're hoping to get done, which is um, a basic, but I'll just tell you right now, it goes so well with these pants. It's like the ideal thing to go with these pants. After that, we're planning on a blazer. So we're actually being very um, public about our development of the blazer. So if you go over to the blog, what's it called? Oh, Blazer Bound. My well, it's good with these names, I like that. So we're doing a whole series of blog posts and we're taking you through the whole process of how it works. Because I thought that a lot of people would be interested um, on how it works. I would have been before I ran this. Um, and we're doing it in real time. So what that means is you're going to experience the issues that we're now having. Um, we got to a point where we actually had a pretty solid um, like second muslin. Um, it's going to be a stretch woven that can be made in a heavy knit. Um, I think it's going to be with a lining as well. Um, and we're at the point now, so we just got another revision back from our drafter. So Carrie is having like pdfplotting.com is going to email, is going to send her the next round because we don't have the plotter. And then she's getting fabric sent to her. So she's going to make the next version. And then we're just going to have to see where we are in terms of like, is she going to like mail it to me and I try it on? Or are we going to have to like wait until we can get back in the studio? So I don't want to make any promises about when it's going to come out because our original goal may or may not happen, but that's the next really big one. Um, we've actually been asked for that since I launched Kashmir and I was reluctant to do it for a long time. Um, Carrie and I yell at no, like, I'm always like, well, that seems really hard. And so that's why we didn't do jeans for a while, but we just had so many people who wanted to have it that we were like, okay. Um, Amy asked, is the blazer the sister piece of the colder? Not really. I mean, they wouldn't make like a suit. It's a that's, different. It's a different style. That's not the pattern that you were talking about before when you were saying that we have something coming. That's oh, a, a good pair. Oh yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Correct. No, the blazer is not the piece that I'm talking about. I'm talking about something else. A top. I'm talking about a top pattern, guys. A knit top pattern. I'm going get that excited. Okay. Carrie is such a gem. Yes, she is, Michelle. Carries a German, we love her very much. Would crepe back satin work? Ooh, it would, it'd be very fancy. Someone, I can't remember who now, is talking about wanting to make the colders for her ballroom dancing outfit, and that sounds pretty fabulous to me. And I think that crepe back satin is something that would work for that. And also, I would like to see pictures of it. Juliana said, what's the name of the fabric you use for your tiger pants, or poots, but I assume you mean pants. It is the Millie, Leopard, they're leopards, not tigers. There it is. Leopard. Um, it's Millie Polyester from moodfabrics.com. So Millie is one of these brands that sometimes sells the ends of its fabric and it's generally very good. It's a very good company. So it's possible you can find it somewhere else. I actually haven't even tried to look. I just found it on Mood randomly because I don't normally actually buy anything from Mood. Um, yeah, and it's a polyester twill. Is it a twill? No. Yeah, yeah, it's a twill. Well. I just popped the link into the chat. Cool. So you can have a look. Um, and you can also look for like the same substrate. I think, you know, finding um, prints that work on pants is pretty hard. So that's why I was excited when I found this one. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is we were planning on doing kits. <laughs> so we have actually five or six, I don't even remember now, five um, samples that are currently being made by one of our outsourced pattern make or uh, sample makers but because we have no idea when we can ship them and we didn't have the chance to photograph them we decided that we were gonna just hold on launching them which is a bit hard honestly because it like impacts how much money we make on the launch but we decided that it would be better to just wait until we have them take some photos and then you'll be able to order them um, and they're pretty similar fabric to the ones that you just saw from Blackbird um, and we have some really nice colors actually like the colors of our supplier are getting much better so we will be doing that when I don't know hopefully soonish oh look Elizabeth is the ballroom dancer Awesome. Thanks for the validation. Yeah, you should do that. How would the colder look with a Dartmouth top? I think it would look good. I think it's like most people tend to tuck their top in um, or, or do like a French tuck, which I think is actually what Birgit did, where you just tuck the middle bit in and then the rest sort of comes out. 
Um, but theoretically a Dartmouth could work. I, I think it look, it'd look a bit weird if you had a longer top and you pulled it on the outside of them, at the outside of the pants. I think the proportion is going to go a little bit odd, but there we go. Um, we got a question about, do we have a chart of what grams or ounces we're considering with lightweight or midweight fabric? So the hard thing is there's a difference between like the weight of a, lightweight linen is totally different than the weight of like a lightweight denim um but maybe that is something that in the future when we're doing recommendations on the blog that we could look into so good idea um all right we are coming up towards the end um so someone's asking the amount of fabric so it really depends on what view and what size you are so if you go over to the um the website and you go to the Calder um, page, you can actually just see the entire chart and see how much you need. Just so you know, at Cashmeret, we always are conservative and we assume that you're using a print and that you need to align all the pieces in the same way. So if there are two pieces and this is up and this is down, we always assume they're like this. We, all, we never think that you can do this, okay? Because we're just being conservative in that. What that means is, can you make them out of less fabric? You might be able to if you're using a solid and it doesn't have a direction in it. So that's FYI. You will never end up with not enough fabric because I think if you take the two scenarios, not having enough or having too much, I would be much, much, much more sad if I didn't have enough because then you often have to order like a whole other yard. So that is how we, our stuff works. Okay. Do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. All right, well, we are coming up towards the end. So someone asked, will we be hosting another meeting next week? Yes, we will. It's the highlight of my week, guys. I'm just stuck in my house with a one-year-old. She did learn to eat crackers today, though. Um, she's, she's got like a sort of a feeding disorder, which isn't great. But today she put a cracker in her mouth. She bit it and she went, nom, 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 and she swallowed some of it. So that was very exciting. So that's like the highlight of what my day is like, but also this when she's asleep. So we are gonna do next week. And what we're gonna talk about next week is sewing for the body that you have. So it's gonna be all about body confidence and about what do you do when you feel like now is not the time to sew for myself or like I just, I can't be dealing with measurements. What do you do if your weight's changing a lot? You know, like, especially for a lot of us now, I think probably a lot of us, our weight is changing, right? Like in different ways. Um, so I actually have a lot of tips about the kind of sewing that you can do that you don't sort of like waste lots of fabric and end up in a bad place. So yeah, so that's going to be the topic next week. So keep an eye out. We're going to advertise the next class, the next webinar, like on our social media and our newsletter and so on. And yeah, I hope to see a lot of you then. So thank you very much for joining. Um, this was recorded and will be available on Facebook to watch if you know anyone else who uh, wants to watch it. So thank you everyone for coming. Bye.